In this tutorial, we will show you how to find specific journal articles using the library catalog. The university subscribes to over 18,000 journals across a variety of subjects, most of which are available electronically to find a specific journal article using a library catalog. We need to search by the journal name as individual article titles are not listed in the catalog. Electric vehicles have arrived. With technology led by Tesla, and all of the world's major car manufacturers following along behind, electric vehicles are now a common sight on the roads of most developed countries. Yet the situation in less developed countries is rather different. The only African country to have started the change to electric vehicles is South Africa. A dramatic fireworks display can be the highlight of a summer. It also can provide a feast for the senses. Bright colors delight the eye. Thunderous booms and whistles surprise the ear. Belief is the human capacity to imagine, to be creative, to hope and dream, to infuse the world with meanings, and to cast our aspirations far and wide. Limited neither by personal experience nor material reality. Believing is a commitment, an investment, a devotion to possibilities. Beliefs permeate neurobiologies, bodies, and ecologies acting as dynamic agents in evolutionary processes. The human capacity for belief, the specifics of belief, and I, and our diverse belief systems shape, structure, and alter our daily lives, our societies, and the world around us. What produces these effects are familiar to neuroscientists, external light and dark signals that help set our daily, or circadian, rhythms, clock genes that act as internal timekeepers, and neurons that signal to one another through connections called synapses. But how these factors interact to freshen a brain once we do sleep has remained enigmatic. Cloud seeding, a form of weather modification, is a way of attempting to change the amount of precipitation that comes from clouds. Cloud seeding is carried out by dispersing substances into the air. Whether salamander frog or toad, amphibians are some of the most diverse and far-flung animals on the planet. However, they're disappearing, and experts are worried since frogs are considered bellwethers for the environment. Their double life makes them unique. It's through their skin that they breathe and drink water because their skin is so permeable. The executive residence in the White House in the United States of America, where the president resides, is divided into several wings. It also includes the vice president's and president's staff's offices. This government building is a national heritage. Countries bordering the Mediterranean have built up a solid reputation for sunshine, 
great tasting food, as well as impressive health statistics, featuring some of the lowest rates of heart disease. Intangible assets perform a number of distinctive functions in the life of each company. Firstly, they witness the prosperity of the firm in its good name. Such a position allows human resource management to employ professional workers and increase labor productivity. Moreover, intangible assets guarantee future value for the firm. And although it is difficult to destroy intangible assets, they can lose their importance in case of carelessness or business failure. European wildcats, thought to be extinct 50 or so years ago in the Jura Mountains, have since recolonized part of their former territory. This resurgence in an area occupied by domestic cats has gone hand-in-hand -hand with genetic crosses between the two species. A team of biologists modeled the interactions between the two species to predict that hybridization will entail the irreversible genetic replacement of wildcats. Steam is water that's heated to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Believe it or not, steam is invisible, you can see right through it. If you look closely at the end of your kettle spout, you'll notice that the white stuff doesn't start right away. It begins billowing about half an inch away from the nozzle, with clear gas in between. This clear gas is the actual steam. The billowy white stuff is what the steam turns into when it hits the drier, cooler air of your kitchen. Those white billows are, in fact, clouds, not steam. In many ways, they are identical to the clouds you can see in the sky. The white color comes from tiny liquid water droplets that have condensed from the steam. More accurately, these billows are a type of cloud called a mixing cloud. These can form when two separate air masses with different temperatures and different amounts of water in them mix together. In the case of your kettle, the hot, steamy gas cools rapidly in the kitchen air, and this sudden coolness is what makes some of the vapor condense. Mixing clouds are pretty common, and they don't need to start with steam. Why does altitude cause headache? Since the air is thinner, there is less oxygen in the blood, so blood flow to the brain increases. The extra blood can cause blood vessels to swell and tissues to press on the sensitive membrane that surrounds the brain, resulting in a headache. But not everyone develops a headache at moderately high altitudes, partly because the low oxygen content of the air causes the climber to breath more often, forcing carbon dioxide out of the blood.
The body reacts to the lowered carbon dioxide content of the blood by decreasing blood flow to the brain. An individual's susceptibility to altitude-induced headache, as well as the severity of the headache, depends on whether the overall blood flow to the brain increases or decreases. At high altitudes, usually over 10,000 feet, an unrelated condition known as high-altitude cerebral edema, or ASE, can develop. Asse occurs when parts of the brain become waterlogged. Unlike altitude-induced headache, which occurs in over 90% of the people who ascend to 11,000 feet. Those people who had type O actually would get sick, but wouldn't die, and had an opportunity to reproduce, and that's how the gene goes forward. And then, if you look at a map of where malaria is now, and where the different peoples are, you can see that the type O was followed, there is where there's malaria, A, and B has gone to colder climates where malaria wasn't a problem, and then AB was just, you know, combination of the races. Evolution is a scientific theory used by biologists. It explains how living things change over a long time and how they have come to be the way they are. The Earth has been around for a very long time. By doing research on the layers of rock, we can find out about its past. That kind of research is called historical geology. We know that living things have changed over time because we can see their remains in the rocks. These remains are called fossils. So, we know that the animals and plants of today are different from those of long ago, and the further we go back, the more different the fossils are. How has this come about? Evolution is a scientific theory used by biologists. It explains how living things change over a long time and how they have come to be the way they are. The Earth has been around for a very long time. By doing research on the layers of rock, we can find out about its past. That kind of research is called historical geology. We know that living things have changed over time because we can see their remains in the rocks. These remains are called fossils. So, we know that the animals and plants of today are different from those of long ago, and the further we go back, the more different the fossils are. How has this come about? Current research into the nature of the relationship between participation in physical activity slash sport and educational performance has produced mixed, inconsistent, and often non-comparable results, including conclusions that academic performance is enhanced or at least maintained by increased habitual physical activity and that both acute exercise and chronic training programs have small, but beneficial, positive impacts on cognitive performance. An international team of scientists is set to go to Arctic to investigate the Greenland shark longevity mystery. 
The shark is known to be the longest living vertebrate animal on the planet Earth. One of the members is Dr. Holy Shields, a physiologist and senior lecturer in the Faculty of Life Sciences at the University of Manchester. She will be the only British scientist in the team to study Greenland shark, which is believed to be the vertebrate animals and mammals with the longest living. The dogs apparently recognized and responded to the human's social cues. And not all cues were equally effective. When the human approached but did not touch the smaller portion, dogs ignored the attention-drawing gesture. For a social signal to influence behavior, it had to demonstrate intention. And the most effective cues also involved communication, such as looking from the food to the dog and back while talking encouragingly. For dogs, choosing a bite may depend on another's bark. Doctors know a lot about prescribing medications. Take two brisk walks and call me in the morning. But for many patients, a light get moving plan might be just what the doctor should have ordered. Many of us aren't exactly in peak physical condition. But a large number of people are actually deconditioned. So says the Mayo Clinic's Michael Joyner in an essay in the Journal of Physiology. After surgery, illness, pregnancy, or extended inactivity, for any reason, people might feel faint or fatigued when they try even mild exercise. Skipping breakfast has drawbacks for both children and adults, for whom a simple bowl of cereal milk can provide a nutritious start to the day, but babies and other preschoolers rarely skip breakfast because they are usually the hungriest at the beginning of the day, so breakfast then becomes more of a learned experience than a response to a biological need. 